So in this video, we're going to go over how you can render a material UI table in React. And we're going to be integrating this with a form up here. That way, when you fill out this form and submit it, it's going to add a row to the material UI table that we're going to put down here. Now, if you haven't seen how to create this material UI form or are unsure how to create one, I'll link the video that I did to do this. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. The first thing that we're going to do is just go to the table component, the simple table example that they have in the material UI docs. So we're going to start from this and then we're going to add on to it. So I'm going to just copy and paste this entire thing and then we're just going to make some changes to get it to work. So I'm going to copy this, come over to my code, and I'm going to create a new file called mytable.tsx. So I'm using TypeScript in this, but if you're following along in JavaScript, you can just call it .gsx. Uh, also, one thing that I wanted to mention is I installed the types for Material UI in the last video, and you actually don't need those. Material UI works out of the box with TypeScript now. All right, so let's go ahead and get this working. So I guess the first thing that I want to do is just to get their example rendering and then come in and fix it so uh, it's using our data instead of this calories, fat, carbs, protein. So we're just going to get it to work with TypeScript real quick. Um, and the easiest way to do that is to just say any on all the arguments. And we'll do the same thing for this theme. All right, and see, is there anything else down here as well? We'll just say as any as well. And now we're exporting default down here. I think that's probably fine. Usually I like changing that. We might change that. And so we're going to go to our app and we're just going to render it underneath our form. And so we're importing it like this because it was export default in that component. All right, so let's go ahead and see this. And cannot find name. I think we just need to restart because we uh, we obviously have my table there. It should be able to find the name. So it's using this with styles to be able to pass custom styles in. I don't think we really need to worry about custom styles at this point, so I'm not gonna worry about using this higher order component um, so I can simplify things a little bit. I wonder if there is a React hook for that now. Well, we'll have to check that later. All right, so here we have our table and it is rendering nicely. So cool, so now we're just going to get our table working with our data, so we have three uh, columns, I guess, first name, last name, and email. And then whenever I fill this out, I want a new row to be added. So I'm going to clean this up a bit. I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of styles and create data. And so I'm going to get rid of the with styles down here. Going to get rid of the prop types. And we're just going to have an export my table. So now we can import it like this. Now, what are we gonna take as props? I'm gonna say interface props, pass those in here. And what we're gonna take is the rows of our table as a, pro as a prop. So the rows of our table is going to be an array. And inside of that array is gonna be an array of objects which is going to have a first name as a string, last name, and email. So we don't need this classes. I'm going to get rid of that. And if we want to style things, I'm just going to style it like that. All right, so this is going to be rows. Now, here is the name of the table cell. For now, I'm going to hard code this. So I'm going to say first name, last name, and then email. So then our rows here, we can go through them. Uh, the table row, the key, it's best not to use just the ID 
or sorry, the index, and it's better to use a ID. And currently we do not have an ID. So I'm gonna go ahead and add this ID as a string and we're gonna introduce adding an ID to each row. Okay, so here the table cells. Here we're gonna have row dot first name, last name, and email. Give that a save. And so we're keeping everything else the same. So basically all we're changing is us iterating through the rows, the cells are changing with the data that we're using. And then we also change the the names of the rows, the column names. All right, so let's go ahead and just render this now. So I'm gonna say rows, and we're gonna start by hard coding a just a list. So the first item, I'm gonna say first name Bob, Bob2, and he's gonna have an ID of 45. So give that a save, and we can see it looks like this. So that looks like how I would expect. Now this isn't really centered. I think that's how they had their table. And in, I'm guessing it's because of this align right business. I'm gonna see what happens if I just get rid of all the attributes that we have there. Okay, and now what if I get rid of them here? All right, now everything lines up on the left. Cool, so I guess it's not gonna hurt also to show the ID, so let's show that as well. Nice. So now we wanna integrate submitting the form. We now are rendering the rows in the right format, at least with uh, the data values that we're accepting, first name, last name, email. We wanna add on to this list. So how can we do that? So let's go over to our app and I'm gonna create some state here. So I'm gonna say use state. So this is react state, this is a hook. And I'm going to copy this, paste it here and get rid of what we have here. So this is, we're basically just setting the initial state to an array that has a single object and that's our Bob dude. So the first thing that's gonna return in this array is the rows, second is an updater function, so set rows. So here I'm gonna say rows, and we're gonna render those. So now when a thing, a form is submitted, we can introduce a new row. So I'm gonna say set rows, and here I'm going to use the updater function. So it takes the current state and returns a new state. So in our case, we're gonna return a new set of rows or a new array. And we're gonna say dot, 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 current state. Or we could call this, a better name for this is gonna be like current rows. And so we can either add this new row at the beginning or the end of the list. I'll show you how to do it the, Actually, let's do the end first because I think we want it at the beginning and I'll show you both ways. And then we just pass in the email, the uh, first name and last name. I'm just gonna say data and then I'm gonna say dot 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 data and then I'm gonna introduce an ID. Now for IDs, I like just using this library called short ID. So I'm gonna go ahead and install that. Yarn add short ID. And I believe I need to also install the types for that. So we'll do at types short ID when this is done. But you can use anything you like to generate a unique ID. From short ID. And we'll just export generate, which is what creates the ID and pass it in there. Nice. All right, so we have our row, that our initial row, and now let's add a new item. So Bob three, submit, and we can see here's our new ID and our new user, so nice. So again, we could just keep submitting and get new users uh, that way. Now, if we wanted the new row to generate at the beginning of the array, uh, we would move the object to the beginning of the array. 
So we'd move the new object that we're adding or new row at the beginning, and then we'd keep uh, we'd keep the existing rows. Uh, the other thing that I was going to show is right now in our form, whenever we submit, we're not clearing it. So we, if we go into our form component, the uh, whenever we submit this, we can clear the form. We have access to a clear form value um, in Formic if we get the second parameter and we can destructure an object here. I think it's called reset form. Yeah. And we'll call that. All right, so give that a save. So now if I come back over here, put in some values, hit submit, you'll notice we get a new one at the very beginning and it cleared here. So cool. So that is what I want to show in this video. That is how you can incorporate a material UI table in with a form, and we can start introducing more rows. The other important part to realize with this is we lifted up the state, and we're storing the state in this app component. So our two children, the form component and the table component, are both parallel children, and the state is totally above them. So that is an important key.